Hello, I'm Jacqueline Wilson and I write children's books. I'm going to be interviewed this morning. Two very special Burgess Hill girls are coming to ask me all sorts of questions. They're interested in reading and writing. I'm interested in hearing all their questions. I love reading and writing when I was a child and it's such a delight when a special school like this features these subjects so prominently. So I think it's going to be very enjoyable. Hello girls, lovely to meet you. I believe you've got lots of questions for me. So who's going first? What's the best piece of, of advice you've ever received? Oh gosh, I've had lots of advice um, throughout my life. I think certainly if you want to be a writer, read lots, which I think is wonderful advice because I like reading more than anything. And um, certainly too, I think you've got to work hard if you want to get anywhere. And so, so many people say they want to be writers and yet don't actually sit down and write. So I'm quite fierce with myself. I write every day and, um, but manage to have some fun too. What's your favourite childhood memory? In the summer holidays, my dad would always take a day off work and um, we'd have a day out in the Surrey countryside, which I quite liked, though my dad was a bit fierce and so, you know, I had to watch what I was saying and doing. But one of our favourite walks was near Guildford and he discovered that there was a big second-hand bookshop there. And in the middle of the second-hand bookshop, it was a very, very long building, there was a room full of children's books. And he said that I could choose one. And we didn't have much money, so we didn't often get a book. And so the joy of walking around this room, and you know, I can remember it vividly. Sadly, the bookshop doesn't exist anymore, but um, I just loved that whole atmosphere, having the book and then going for a lovely walk in the sunshine. And I think we had a rather splendid tea too. So that was a lovely memory. What was your favourite book when you were a child? I think it was probably Bally Shoes by Noel Stretfield. Have you ever read that book? Yes. I loved it. And um, I wanted Bally lessons myself and I wasn't allowed. So I had pink bedroom slippers and pretended I was one of the sisters in Bally Shoes, sort of prancing around our flat. I've read it heaps of times. I've even written an introduction to a kind of posh version of Bally Shoes and I still love it. What's your favourite hobby other than writing? Well, I like reading. I love going to art exhibitions and it's been pretty horrible <laughs> during this last year because it hasn't really been possible. I like taking my dog Jackson for a long walk. Um, I live quite near the seaside and I love going to the beach. I like to do all sorts of things. Which of your books did you most enjoy writing? I think it has to be Hetty Feather. It's the first time I tried to write a Victorian book and she was really such a super character to write about. And I've written heaps of Victorian books since then. In fact, the latest one, The Runaway Girls, is set in 1851. I haven't written mid-Victorian books so far and I just love doing that. Are you more introverted or extroverted? Oh, that's an interesting question. When I was your age, I was an introvert and really, really was very quiet at school and very shy. But as I've got older and particularly since I started to do lots of events and meeting lots of people, I've changed. I think I've become much more of an extrovert now and I love meeting people. I suppose it's just a little bit of confidence is needed. So um, I'm both, <laughs> basically. Do you speak any other languages? If so, what's your favourite thing to say in that language? I learnt a little bit of French at school, but I have to admit I wasn't very good at learning languages because it's weird. My daughter is an academic and actually teaches French. Um, so I'll say bonjour. <laughs> That's about all. Who is the person who inspires you the most? 
I'm trying to collect creative people who carry on into their old age. So artistically, I think David Hockney is wonderful because I think he's in his 80s and um, he's still painting, drawing every day. And um, I've always liked the novels of Elizabeth Jane Howard and she certainly carried on writing brilliantly well into her 80s. You see where I'm going from this? I am getting on a bit. I want to be able to keep on writing and hopefully, you know, trying to write at the top of my ability. So, fingers crossed. In three words, how would you describe yourself? Mm, gosh, imaginative, funny and hopefully kind. Which is your favourite place to visit? That's quite an easy one because it's where my daughter Emma lives. So I love to go and visit with her. And Cambridge has got beautiful old buildings and it's got a lovely art gallery. It's got botanical gardens and very good shops too. How long on average does it take to write a book? takes me about six months from when I get the first idea or maybe I get the idea while I'm writing the book before that but then when I start writing um, I do the first draft writing a little bit every day and then I read through it and then I don't know if you've ever had to rewrite something, that's the boring bit for me, but I try and make it as good as I possibly can. And by the time I send it off to my agent who sends it to the publishers, it's about six months. But I do write quite long books. Do you have a favourite character from one of your books? I've mentioned Hetty Feather before. She's one of my favourites. And my other favourite has to be Tracy Beaker because I've been writing about her for ages. I've written about her as a little girl, and now there are two books about her actually grown up with a daughter of her own. And, and also she's been a, a quite popular television series. So yeah, Trace is a favorite as well. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? <laughs> um, probably hazelnut, um, a sort of posh version of hazelnut ice cream. And then sometimes you get a little bit of sort of cream whipped on top. So um, generally this is in France, say, or Italy, they specialise in these really yummy ice creams. And the hazelnut one is great. In fact, one time I actually ate three in one day. Isn't that disgusting? <laughs> when we aren't in lockdown, what's your typical Saturday evening spent doing? I love to go out with my partner and our two best friends and in our village there are lots of lovely places to have a meal out and to have a drink. Um, or if we're staying in, we might read for a while, we might take the dog out for a long walk if it's summertime and then we might settle down with a box set. What's your favourite animal? Well, as my dog Jackson seems to be sneaking in and out the room, I have to say a little dog. He's a rescue terrier and he's really a sweetheart. And today, thank goodness, he hasn't had one of his barking moods. I've been talking about my new book, The Runaway Girls. Um, this is Lucy, who's um, a very rich little girl. And this is Kitty, who's absolutely, hasn't got a penny to her name. Very different sorts of girls in Victorian times, but they run away together and they're actually earning their money by singing and dancing for different people. And they've decided, it's 1851, that it would be fantastic to go to the Great Exhibition um, which was held in Hyde Park. There's a very ghostly picture of it there. And they thought that they'd sing and dance outside while people were queuing up and hopefully earn lots of money. Um, but 
Lucy in particular wants to go to the Great Exhibition because she's heard that there is an enormous stuffed elephant and she's never seen an elephant. So the palace was even more impressive inside. The sun poured through the shining glass and made pools of light on the pale wooden floor. There was greenery everywhere, as if the park outside had crept in with us. Real trees reached right up the arch of the transept and water spurted from an immense glass fountain. White marble statues, twice life-size, peered down upon the crowds below, unabashed by their own nakedness. I asked an attendant if there was a gallery especially for animals and he directed us to the eastern nave. We saw two huge Arabian horses rearing up on their white marble legs and a great Bavarian lion so realistic that we backed away rapidly, scared it would pounce on us. But where was the wondrous stuffed elephant? We wandered through gallery after gallery and, and I describe all the the things that they see in the gallery um, and it's an enormous bed and they wonder about what it would be like to sleep in this great big bed. Um, at last we came across a bizarre collection of stuffed animals and thought the little frogs very comical, especially the barber frog supposedly shaving his customer. But there was no sign of any elephant. I began to think I'd imagined one. But then we found ourselves in the gorgeously ornate Indian gallery. And at last, there was the elephant. He was enormous, richly clothed in fine embroidered hangings with a carved gold carriage as big as a hackney cab balanced on his vast grey back. There's my elephant. Oh, look at him, Kitty. Isn't he splendid and so lifelike? When we have the Crystal Palace all to ourselves, I'm sure he'll come alive and we can climb right up to that carriage and sit there like sultans. The elephant will take us for a tour of the exhibition and then ride us round Hyde Park by the light of the moon. Won't that be marvellous, I cried. That's Lucy getting totally carried away. And um, they do have a wonderful time inside the exhibition and outside but loads of different quite scary things happen but I promise it does have a happy ending. <laughs>